story time video traveling to ukraine what up internet world it's your boy jermaine back with another video i thought i would sit down do a story time video and talk about traveling in ukraine okay so i have been to ukraine and with all this you know stuff that's going on with the war it, it, it's kind of crazy it's like it sort of hit me differently because this is a place I've, I've been to and i have a connection with the place and this is not just like something i'm you know reading about in a book and you know there's no connection like i've been there and the only thing i can think of is like wow like i just just wonder what is ukraine like now versus from when i went so let's just let's just go back in time and i'll just tell a story about you know how i got to ukraine how i was traveling there and kind of some of the experiences that happened when i was in the country because a lot of unusual things happen and i had a blast and i still have a lot of vlogs on youtube that i um created when i was traveling in ukraine maybe i'll make a playlist a ukraine playlist and i'll um you know put them up above here or maybe you can find them you know down um in the the, the description down below but first off how did i ended up getting to Ukraine because when I left the US I had no idea no plans on ever going to Ukraine especially on this particular trip that I left the US on um, but it was a little random it was a little spontaneous um, I had a round-trip flight from South Africa back to the US and then returned back to South Africa so I took that return flight back to South Africa and the idea was just to stay for what a couple weeks right and then travel back to America. Well, that ended up turning into six months, right? I, you know, traveled around Africa for a little bit, went from South Africa to Botswana, from Botswana to Namibia, Namibia back to South Africa. From South Africa, I found a flight going to Turkey that happened to have a really long layover in Dubai. So I was like, cool, that sounds great. Like I could see the Burj Khalifa because when else am I going to be around here to go see the Burj Khalifa so cool go see the Burj Khalifa then fly over to Turkey and then from Turkey I remember when I was in Dubai getting on the plane going to Turkey I was literally finding a flight to exit Turkey because the whole idea is when you when you fly into one country you want to make sure you have a flight leaving that country right so I'm about to get on the flight going to Turkey and I book a flight from Turkey going to Ukraine because it was a good deal you know back then I was just traveling on budget like oh whatever is a good deal we're gonna go with the flow right so I am in Turkey and I you know I already had a good time already set ready to go um, you know got my flight to Ukraine now I don't have a flight live in Ukraine because I'm just gonna tell them at the border hey I'm gonna travel down to um, down to Moldova right so that's why I don't have a return flight so you know I fill out this long form which was a little bit different it was like a, a form I think it was like a couple different pages or something so I fill out this form and you know I, I forget what airlines I flew on I flew I think it was um it was some Ukrainian national airlines I really really like when I fly these random airlines that I've never flown because I noticed that a lot of times they'll put me in the front seat like the very front seat on the plane which is which is pretty cool which is pretty fly right I can sit like right up front, right? So I um, remember, you know, getting on the flight, having this great seat up front, and we're leaving the airport, okay? Now we're leaving this airport in um, Istanbul. Now this airport in Istanbul had just recently opened. Um, believe it or not, when I was flying to Turkey, I actually thought it was going to the old airport, and I was so surprised to find out, hey, it's going to the new airport. Um, the old airport was, uh, was a little bit closer to the city, the new airport was farther away, but the newer airport was like just brand new and super modern. And, you know, it's just a massive airport. Lots of people were talking about it. It just opened. So awesome. Flying to that airport and I'm flying out of, you know, that airport. This airport, super modern, brand new. I'm looking out the window and I'm like, wow, look at this amazing airport. Like we don't even have anything like this in America. And flight takes off. Great takeoff. Great flight. We get to Ukraine. And when we get to Ukraine, we're landing and I'm looking down and it's like, you know, it's obviously like, you know, a smaller airport, right? Um, nowhere near the size of the Turkish airport. And we land and the runway is like just really old school, right? It's really bumpy. It's really, there's potholes. There's like cones in the, 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 the thing. There's, I saw a dog on, like on the runway and I was like, wow, this is different. This is different. Now up until this point, 
my whole perspective of Ukraine was, you know, I knew it wasn't like a Germany type country. I knew it wasn't like a world leader type country. But then at the same time, like I, I don't know. I just didn't really, you know, like how sometimes the media paints certain pictures about certain countries like you know a lot of african countries are like you know poor and you're gonna go there and it's gonna be like straw huts right and then you also hear these you know things about the uk and then you know paris and how like paris is the city of love and i've been to paris plenty of times and i mean yeah you can call it the city of love you know but you know i guess to to, to each his own but check this out when i got to ukraine when the plane landed the first thing i said to myself was wow i've been to african countries with much much nicer airports than this right Um, because definitely flying into the airport in namibia airport's very nice and modern and taken care of and it's like that and you know um you know cape town all throughout south africa you know it's like that you know and i totally get it south africa has a little bit has other things going on versus ukraine you know but the whole you, you know how the how the picture is painted the picture is painted is you know you know, you know, Africa is the one that's that's rough, right? So as you know, as me had just left backpacking in Africa, I, I get there and I, I get to Ukraine and I'm I'm kind of surprised. I'm just kind of like, oh, okay, you know. It's not like I'm looking down on the country. I'm just like, oh, surprised. Like, okay, this is gonna be an adventure. This is gonna be, this is gonna be different, right? You know, I. So I'm going through customs, and since I, you know, was the first person, the first, since I had the first seat, seat A1. I was the first to get off the plane. Therefore, I was the first to get up to customs. Now, flying into Ukraine is not like flying into Turkey. When you fly into Turkey, there are hundreds of flights coming in. Flights going all over the world, right? Flying into Ukraine, there's that one flight coming in. There's no three flights coming in at one. There's no, you know, four flights going in. You know, there's just that one flight coming in. And maybe in a couple hours later, there's like another flight. But there's, I don't think there's multiple flights coming in, right? I flew into um, Odessa, if you guys want to know. I did not go to Kiev, right? Got to Odessa. I remember doing something with Money Exchange, right? And I remember getting ripped off with Money Exchange. It's in one of my vlogs. I can't exactly remember, but like, I, I gave them money and they gave, they, they gave me the money back with it's at some crazy ridiculous exchange rate and like i lost like a boatload and then i took that same money and gave it to the cab driver and the cab driver charged me i think it was like 27 dollars for a ride that should have cost like four dollars you know so like i kind of had that thing going on i would have to say ukraine out, out of uh, out of all the countries i've been to it would have to go on the list of the lonely countries um, and the reason why I say that Ukraine would have to go on the list of lonely countries is I, I just have to sort of this whole list. Um, sometimes I go to countries and I go and I just meet people and it's very, very easy and it's very spontaneous and it's, you know, it, it just goes with the flow, right? It, it, it's simple. It's easy, right? And other countries I go to and it, it's just like not as easy to meet people. Um, and this could be based off of a number of reasons. Um, it could be language barriers. It could be... Um, it could be um, maybe the time of the year. It, it could be a lot of things. But with Ukraine, I noticed that this was you know, a, a very lonely place because I ended up staying in an Airbnb. And the cool thing about Airbnbs, when you stay in an Airbnb, you can stay in some pretty cool, unique places, right? You can stay in some pretty cool neighborhoods that the tourists wouldn't ever really get to go to. But you can go there because you found this cool place on Airbnb and it has this r- really cool rooftop deck and it has a pool in the back and it's amazing and it's cheaper than staying in a hotel right airbnb can be great but this particular airbnb i remember booking this airbnb and i was looking at hostels and for some reason i think i just went with an airbnb just because it wasn't that more it wasn't that much more expensive right i think a hostel was like 15 dollars a night or something if i'm not mistaken or 10 dollars a night and i think a private I think the Airbnb I stayed in was like $25 a night. And what I mean by $25 a night, this Airbnb was um, in a high-rise building. Um, this building was built maybe five years ago. Um, this was uh, definitely outside of the outside of Odessa. Like I flew into Odessa, I stayed in um, Arcadia, which is just mm, maybe four or five miles from Odessa. Um, walking distance a couple different days I did walk from you know the Airbnb I was staying at in 
Arcadia and I walked over to Odessa. You know, a couple of different days I did that. And, you know, um, like I said, when you stay in an Airbnb, it's a little bit harder to meet people versus staying in a hostel. You can stay in a hostel, not know anyone, and just like meet other travelers, like, you know, at the Airbnb. Hey, where are you from? Oh, you're from the US? Oh, really? What? Oh, New York? Oh, what school you went to? Oh, really? Oh, you work at Chase Bank? Oh, wow. Yo, let's hang out, you know? You know, it's really easy to meet people along the way. It's really easy to meet someone from a foreign country and like chill. But when you, you know, go to an Airbnb, it's a little bit different, right? Um, it, it may be very different, right? And so I remember checking into this Airbnb. We're pulling up and this was like, um, a really nice area. I definitely saw a lot of luxury cars like leaving this area. What it was, was it was multiple high-rise buildings in this area. I want to say there are about 20 to 25 stories. It was, when I say multiple, I'm talking about five to six like high-rise buildings. Walking around this area was very, very, very uh, different, okay? For example, right outside of this apartment unit that I was staying in, this, this brand new unit, there was this old airplane, right? And it looked like this airplane was had been sitting there from like war times, right? The bullet holes and stuff like that, it was just sitting there. And they just built all these big buildings around it. These buildings were, I mean, based off of some of the other buildings I saw in um, Odessa, these buildings were like luxury buildings. These were some of the like nicest buildings to stay at in, 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 in this part of Ukraine, which was, you know, Arcadia, which is outside of, you know, Odessa. Well, going there, um, I've noticed this in a lot of Eastern European countries or in just a lot of countries in general. With They have different building standards. Like in California, we have some of the strict, strictest building standards like in the country, if not the world in some places, right? So to build something, you have to go through like all these hoops. You have to make sure your building is like earthquake proof. You have to just electrical, you know, plumbing. It has to be like all, all these things have to line up, right? Well, in a lot of other countries, they don't, they're not as strict with these, these things. So they may build a building and the building may have like problems like soon after the building is built. And a couple of problems I noticed in this building I was staying in was like, it was like the cracks up against the wall. Like you would like walk into the, the building waiting for the elevator and you would see like a crack from the bottom going all the way up. That's not a good sign, you know? Um, but once again, this place was really, really cool to stay at. It had really fast internet, just really, really weird. Um, you go to Eastern Europe and the internet speeds are so much faster than what you can get in California. I just switched to from T-Mobile to Verizon. I have a T-Mobile phone and a Verizon phone. And Verizon is actually not that much faster. Like it is when you do a speed test, but compared to some of the speeds I was getting in Eastern Europe, holy moly some of the internet speeds are like way faster right and ukraine you know nightlife i didn't really go out and experience nightlife because i just didn't really know where to go i was kind of staying in another town and i didn't really see any places to go vegan food it was definitely a handful of vegan restaurants i was able to eat a couple different nights i did eat Chinese food, so I eat Chinese food, so that's kind of a, a vegan alternative that, that you, you can, you know, uh, vegan go to that you can run to when you are, you know, backpacking and you're traveling in a foreign country. Um, what else that really stood out? Um, you would def definitely see guards, like military soldiers, randomly in different places, um, and you would see them standing in threes, like one soldier facing this way, one soldier facing this way, and one soldier facing this way. It looked very like Soviet style. Um, Odessa had some really, really, really nice beaches. Um, after a couple days of being there, like I, you know, got pretty lonely. So I, I went to Tinder and I was, you know, swiping. And I ended up going on a date with um, with this vegan chick. She's probably gonna see this video because I don't think too many people are making videos talking about Ukraine right now. Um, we went on a date and she was like an English school teacher. And she literally talked my head off. I think she just really wanted someone to speak English with. I don't even think she wanted to make out, you know. I just think she just wanted someone to just speak English with. And I remember hanging out, we hung out, like we went to some vegan restaurant at like, I think five, and then we ended up having like falafels at like 10 p.m. And I remember saying bye and like, you know, I think we're still friends on Facebook, but like, you know, nothing happened. She was like, 
she wouldn't even kiss me. She had these dogs in her hand and like they were just going all over the place. And I was just like, oh man, Ukrainian girls, they're something, especially the vegan ones, yo. Yeah, they're definitely, definitely something. They, they don't even kiss you. They, they love their dogs so much. I mean, they kind of sound like the SF girls, you know. Anyway, Ukraine. And then after leaving Ukraine, I remember the day before, no, the day of leaving Ukraine, showed up to this train station to catch a bus to go to Moldova, and I showed up a little early, and I went walking around, and I found this freaking market that was like, it was like just all mud, just people selling stuff, like, it was just, it took me back someplace, it took me back, I saw lots of Africans there, um, I actually saw a handful of Africans in this in this part of uh, Eastern Europe. I remember um, also when I was going through customs, I showed them my passport and I had dreadlocks then, but on my passport photo I had no dreadlocks and I thought that the guards was gonna give me, the customs patrol was gonna give me a hard time and they just sort of did a quick double take and like let me in there. So I thought that was pretty cool. No problems at customs. I had no problems like that in Ukraine. You know, no, no, you know, Nobody messing with me or anything. Like a couple people yelling, you know, because they're like, "Oh, you don't speak Ukrainian. What are you here?" You know. But for the most part, people are really, really nice, and there's lots of really, really cool parks in Odessa. I mean, I don't know what's going on with Ukraine now with the whole war situation. Um, I, I'm just, you know, sharing uh, memories and sharing a story time video of when I was there. I have no idea what it's like now, but anyway, I, I can just keep my memories and my experiences of Ukraine with me and. Ukraine strong, yo. But anyway, like, comment, subscribe. Thanks a lot for watching, and peace out, yo.